All right, guys, I have to admit, I'm sick of covering Bill Maher, bro. I am. I feel like every show we're talking about Bill Maher. Because you know what? It's one of those things where in 2016, he was pro-Bernie. He said a lot of the things that we all agree with. And so to have somebody like that do an about face and just progressively get worse and worse, it's like you can't help but talk about it, right? It reminds me of how it was Bernie in 2016. Who did he support in 2020? Amy Klobuchar. Literally the only person in the country who was a Bernie to Klobuchar voter. Makes no goddamn sense. But since then, he's gotten even worse, right? So here we go. He's going to do uh, a rant here against the media. And, man, there's a lot to say about this. He's living in a glass house, and we'll dive into it and break it down for you. And finally, new rule, now that the campus protesters are finally packing up their tents and delousing their hair, <laughs> it's time for the media to admit that they blew the whole thing way out of proportion. Because as always with media these days, they don't cover what's most important, just what's most fun to watch. There are 15.2 million college students in the U.S., and 2,300 have been arrested. That's 1 67th of 1%, and half of the ones in New York weren't even students. But we, were given the, but we were given the false impression that these protesters are the voice of their generation, having found a cause for which they were willing to go to the tents and to the barricades. Oh, please, these kids are more violent when their team wins a championship. <laughs> this is quite the argument, bro. The argument he's making is like, this was nothing. This was not really if this was nothing. Why was there conversation about not only sending in the cops, but sending in the National Guard? Why were there politicians drafting bills, trying to call these people terrorists and get them on the, uh, the no fly list? If this was nothing, why was it such a big deal? And he's saying, well, the media puffed it up. That's the problem is the media puffed it up. What do you want them to do? Cover the students who weren't protesting? Steve went to class today and then he came home and jacked off and did his homework. What, like, what, what do you want to happen here? By the way, when was the last time that you saw the younger generation this motivated? You could argue it was probably 2020 and the BLM protests and riots, right? Those were big stories. This, of course, is a big story. We all know why he's trying to downplay it. He's trying to downplay it because he doesn't agree with the protesters, and so he's trying to say, the media is focusing on the wrong thing, okay? I'm Bill Maher, okay? If this was people protesting for an issue that he agreed with, he would also be talking about it and have glowing praise. A Harvard youth poll proved it. They asked people 18 to 29 what issues mattered most to them, and out of 16 choices, Palestine came in 15. 34% of people age 18 to 29 saying, this is the most important issue. 34%. You never see foreign policy get any play at all. And it's 34% of 18 to 29 year olds saying this is the most important issue. And by the way, a large percentage of that 34% is willing to go into the streets to protest over this. Sorry, Bill, you can't downplay this, bro. You can't downplay this. Stop acting like this isn't a huge fucking deal. Stop acting like we're not getting story after story coming out showing that Israel has concentration camps. They've tortured people to death. They've kept handcuffs on so long they had to amputate. They're doing amputations in Gaza without any anesthetic because Israel's not allowing in any anesthetic. Stop trying to act like this isn't a thing. Stop trying to pretend like this doesn't matter. It definitely matters. And by the way, you're about to fuck around and find out because that Democratic National Convention is going to pop off, boy. Then you come out and tell us, hey, don't cover that either. Just want to do what they went to college for in the first place, to experiment with being a lesbian. <laughs> but... <laughs> But when these kids chant, the whole world is watching, they're right. But only because you assholes with the cameras won't show anything else. Isn't there a bear in a swimming pool you, somewhere you should be covering? <laughs> look, I know this is a joke, right? I understand it's a joke. But look at the comparison. So you think it makes more sense to cover stupid little stories like that? Talk about the bear in the swimming pool? Talk about the kid with the fucking lemonade stand? Like... Even you're not that dumb, Bill Maher, right? Even you're not that dumb. He's saying that they're overhyping this issue of the student protesters. <laughs> he's he's going to have a fucking rude awakening, bro. He's going to have a rude awakening when those young voters are the ones who decide the election. I thought as a public service, since it's so hard to find reliable news these days, tonight I would provide a few rules of thumb for trying to follow the news in our modern age. Starting with, if the headlines in your preferred news outlet routinely feature words like shreds, destroys, pummels, bashes. Your outlet is a partisan piece of shit. Either that or you're reading a Batman comic. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Some of you guys are going to think I'm crazy for saying this, but I mean this sincerely. Is he talking about me, bro? The number of times we've covered Bill Maher 
and use like those words. Bill Maher shredded, Bill Maher destroyed, Bill Maher obliterated, Bill Maher pummeled, Bill Maher bashed. We do it all the time. Why? Because Bill says dumbass shit and somebody's got to respond to it. He's the smuggest, most condescending man in America and sometimes he says the most idiotic shit you've ever heard. Somebody's got to respond to it. So either he or his team perhaps have seen a lot of the negative stuff about him coming from outlets like mine. And so th this is now it's a little pet peeve of his, right? There's a bad outlet say do stuff like that, bro. Bad outlets do stuff like that. Well, I mean, look, I know they're doing this sarcastically, tongue in cheek type shit, but <laughs> the title of this video is Bill Maher destroys the media. I know it's sarcastic, but look, if he thinks this is an important piece of work of his own, well, why is it okay for you to do it, but other people not to do it? And I I'll predict that he'll keep doing titles like this too, by the way. You want to know why? Because they perform. They perform. That's why. Now, usually when we use it, it's also true, right? So it's a double whammy. It gets clicks, but it's also true. But he's like, oh, no, you're supposed to put highbrow titles like the New York Times. Yes, thank you very much. Make a video nobody ever wants to watch. Do that. Because that would be the honorable thing to do. This outlet routinely feature words like shreds, destroys, pummels, bashes. Your outlet is a partisan piece of shit. Either that or you're reading a Batman comic. <laughs> I don't know, man. Tell me if you guys think he's he's talking about this show. Tell me if you think he is. It kind of reminds me of the thing that Russell Brand said the other day. That, oh, some in the media are very cynical about my uh, born-again Christian status. And I think he was referring to me because I was like the only person who was questioning what the fuck was going on there. Ditto with obliterates, roasts, annihilates, and owns. I've definitely used all those titles for Bill <laughs> definitely used all those titles. You're supposed to be a source for information, not Nikki Glaser at the Tom Brady roast. <laughs> Well, she was He's so salty, bro. Two, any news source that quotes the internet or writes Twitter says or a bunch of hacks too lazy to do real journalism. You can pretend you wrote a piece on the zeitgeist, but what you really did was look on your phone and quote the three angriest people with the most time on their hands. The thing about this that makes no sense is that, bro, you cannot be on your high horse. You're a comedian who talks about politics for a living on your show, right? You also, he also still does stand-up comedy. But he's a comedian who talks about politics on his show. I'm sorry, man, but you're on par with outlets like this where I'm just a douchebag who talks about news and politics and things I find interesting and I give my opinion. I give facts and information and my opinion. You're on par. It's the same realm of thing that we are doing here. And so he's trying to pretend like it's not okay when you do it, but it's okay when I do it. Not buying it. Not buying it. You're just finally getting pushback for some of your dumbass beliefs, and all of a sudden you don't like it. Three, if your news outlet consistently reduces everything that happens in the world to who the president of America is, get rid of it. It's just thoughtless, reflexive team politics. Trust me, no one lighting a tire fire in Haiti is thinking, I wouldn't have done this under Trump, but given the weakness of the Biden administration, why not? <laughs> so you all understand the dumb point he's making here, right? He's salty that they're calling Joe Biden Genocide Joe at these pro-Palestine protests. And he's saying, anybody who's trying to boil this down to this is Joe Biden's fault, they're, they're wrong. They're dumb. But here's the thing, Bill. Israel cannot do what they're doing without our support. It's U.S. money and U.S. weapons that has gone towards killing over 40,000 Palestinians, including about 16,000 children and over 10,000 women. So it does actually boil down in a very direct way to Biden. You don't like that, but it's true. I don't care if you don't like it. It's a fact. And people know that. Like, he's insulting people's intelligence. That, that What, they can't figure that out? They can't figure that out? It's not fucking Burundi or Greenland that's sending all the, this uh, money and all these weapons to Israel. Every problem in the world isn't caused by the president. When that train derailed in East Palestine, it wasn't because Trump deregulated the brakes and the container ship. Wait, 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 wait. It absolutely the fuck was. It absolutely the fuck was. Wasn't there a bunch of reporting talking about the deregulation that happened for uh, very dangerous chemicals like that? What? What is he doing? Didn't hit the bridge because of Biden's woke DEI agenda. These That's true, of course. Aren't news stories, their storylines pumped into your bubble. Four, always be aware that once the news became a profit division of media companies, they stopped being in the news business and are now in the audience stroking business. The goal is no longer- That's what you do too, bro. That's what you do too. Look, I agree with the broad point that like we need to have some news and information that is that isn't from a for-profit sector. 
I agree with that because usually better news and information comes out, right? Like compare BBC to like MSNBC, right? It's, it's better. It's better. So I agree with that point. But you can't, you can't act like you're not guilty of the same shit that you're saying is bad now. You're, you're a comedian who talks about the news, and it's a for-profit venture over there at HBO. Inform opinions. It's to reinforce them. Walter Cronkite used to say, that's the way it is. Now it's, that's our story, and we're sticking to it. <laughs> narrative first, whole story never. That is totally Bill Maher. He's all about the fucking narrative. He square pegs round hole... <laughs> Let me try that again. He square peg round holes shit all the time. That's what you do also. Oh, Bill, you're such a badass, bro. You put your middle fingers up, bro. You're such a badass. Why don't you tell us 14 more times about how you smoke weed and like sex? Aren't you 60? This motherfucker's 60, bro. And I, I smoke weed. I'm cool and edgy. I like sex. Okay. Bro, you put your middle fingers up, bro. What a badass, bro. Five, never trust the initial reports. The media cares way more about being first than being right. They love a scoop, but it's a scoop of shit because it always turns out to be wrong. This goes way back to, remember Columbine? Remember that, the first school shooting where it was widely reported that the shooters were members of a trench coat mafia? Uh, whatever. <laughs> Wrap it up. Wrap it up, Bill. You have to care about the truth. The media doesn't care about it because they know- The guy who's been defending Israel committing a genocide wants you to care about the truth. What is there to say in response to that? I don't need to say anything in response to that. That speaks for itself. You're not an adherent to the truth as much as you think you are, Bill Maher. You don't care, but you just want to hear your side. Again, do I need to say it again? This is what you do. This is what you do. You're all about the narrative. You're all about your side. It just so happens now your side is enlightened centrist. Don't act like you're not part of a thing, because you are. You're not some brave iconoclast truth teller who's always, who's always poking everybody in the eye around him. No, you have your lane. You want to beat up on wokeness for the 478th time, Bill, that you've done in the past week? You want to suck off Israel for the 918th time? Stop acting like, oh, you know, he's above it all, bro. He's so smart. He's not like the rest of you fools in media who try to get clicks. He never does that. At some point, you need to take a step back, look around, and be really honest. Are you actually as fucked as your news feed tells you you are? Are you miserable? Some people are, and we should help them. Are you destitute? Some people are, and we should help them. But most people who take the subway get to work alive. Most don't fall out of a plane with a missing door. Okay, he's talking about that Boeing story, about how the plane fell off the door, and he's downplaying it. Like, and most, 99.9% .9 of the time, the planes are safe, okay? Bill, this is now what? The eighth story of a, a Boeing colossal failure? We just got the report that they're taking parts literally out of waste bins and forcing them into the planes? We have two whistleblowers who've been murked by Boeing? They're cutting all sorts of corners? The 737s were falling out of the fucking air because they didn't build them properly because they were cutting corners? And you're like, don't focus on that. Focus on all the planes that land. Odds are you won't actually catch bird flu during a school shooting or be living on the street because a squatter snatched your house. Be honest. Are you really that sad about the present, sorry about the past, and scared shitless about the future? People come up to me a lot these days, and they say, Bill, what are we going to do if he wins? They don't even ha ever have to say who. I know who they mean. The guy who always looks like he's jerking off two guys when he dances. <laughs> Okay, that's a good joke. It's true, he does. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Fan favorite. Well, you know what? I don't know what we'll do if he wins, but my guess is we'll keep on living. Trump could absolutely blow up the world on day one of term two. He's a dangerous, erratic, insane, awful person, and I'd love to help him get not elected. But he didn't actually start World War III last time, or nuke a hurricane, mm, or trade Puerto Rico. This is Bill's uh, enlightenment moment, right? Oh, yeah. 
Let's uh, let's not be alarmist about anything ever. Well, Bill, tell us your thoughts on climate change again. You're alarmist about that. Why are you alarmist about that in that instance? Because it's true. The facts say we're we're in real shit here. So maybe sometimes alarmism is the proper response. I got another one for you where alarmism makes sense. A fucking genocide going on right under our noses. God, I hate his fake highfalutin bullshit, man. His, his enlightened centrist tap dance is so fucking tired and dull and boring and horrible. I think we got enough. Uh, so he also went on CBS. By the way, I might get hit on copyright for this, so hook a brother up with a subs subscription to the YouTube channel and also hook me up with uh, Patreon support because these are the, <laughs> the, the risk-taking ones where it's like this video could get jacked at any minute. But anyway, so he goes on... Uh, this is a terrible picture of Bill. <laughs> He goes on CBS this morning, and this really got under my skin. Listen to what he says. What is the through line through everything you write and everything you say? Uh, keep it real, you know? Don't be tribal. Don't say something just because that's going to make the audience of one side applaud or boo. Practical solutions as opposed to ideological. And uh, don't pull a punch. We had a great show. The 68-year-old Marr has been swinging at targets high and low his entire career, taking his own share of knocks along the way. But he still gladly courts controversy. The right response to speech you don't like is more speech, not the lazy, cowardly response of canceling people. That attitude explains the title of his new book. It's compiled from years of Marr's commentary on real time. I wanted to see if the world had changed or I had changed more. I was excavating, reading over all these editorials from years and years and years. And I wanted to find that answer. I speak for the normies, you know. I, I speak for that, I think, vast middle that is tired of the... Um, I don't want to hate half the country, and I don't hate half the country. All right, that pissed me off. The idea that Bill Maher speaks for the normies, nothing has ever been less true. Bill, that word means something. Normies mean something. Normies means you're really not too online. And you're really not... Uh, that much into politics. If anything, you're relatively apolitical. You'll give an opinion every now and then if you're asked it, but you're kind of apolitical. Bill Maher is definitely not apolitical. Not even close. And he's definitely, uh, you know, not offline. Or excuse me. He's, yeah, he's not offline. He's massively online, right? You can't say you speak for the normies, bro. You, and you can't say you speak for the vast middle. No, you don't. This, this idea that you sort of channeling what uh, the majority of Americans believe, the silent majority believes. Bro, let's go to the polls on the Israel issue. The one which is now his big issue. They totally disagree with you. People are screaming for a ceasefire. A plurality says Israel is doing a genocide. A position that you would call anti-Semitic when people say that. Don't act... He, he acts like he's the fucking, you know... I'm the America whisperer. No, you're not. You're a multimillionaire, out-of-touch douchebag, is what you are. That's what you are. I acknowledge it. He's never going to acknowledge it. No. And he'll keep doing his little enlightened centrist uh, tap dance. Just stop with the, like, thinks he's a fucking hero, right? You think you're a hero. No, you're an asshole on HBO denying a genocide aggressively. That's what you are. Let's call it what it is. Hey, y'all, do me a favor and like and subscribe. It helps out big time in the algorithm. Click the bell as well for notifications when videos drop. And watch that video on screen right now. You know you want to.